Hey everybody, it's Rolls of Gamer. Welcome to episode 47 of the Final Fantasy VIII playthrough. And we are still side questing before going to the final final set of areas here in the game. Every Final Fantasy has a few endpoint dungeons. Well, at least these PS1 era ones did. I shall become your ally. Neat. What do we get? That was the uh, GF that who's ring we picked up last time, and uh, we uh, have the items to uh, summon him now. I did some grinding off screen, and here we are at uh, I think the island closest to hell, and I will use another thing that I picked up off screen. Go back. You missed it. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Blah, 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 blah. Phoenix Pinion. And it gives us the sort of optional GF Phoenix. You get this in Windhill from doing uh, a few things. Um, walking back and forth, there's like a Chocobo crossing. And if you hit it enough times, you get a Phoenix Pinion. And it does some damage, but now that that's been used one time... It can possibly show up whenever the whole party's knocked out to uh, restore them back to health. And I showed you generator does not work on the visage. You gotta beat that son of a bitch regularly. So we picked up a GF last part with Cactar. We picked up Doom Train. Um, there are two more. And let's go get one of them right now. This is here. Take, take a good look at the map. This is a secret area, kind of. We're at the Deep Sea Research Facility, and uh, we'll find out some more about it here. I accidentally went back into, into the airship. You have to forgive me. I'm, I have a little bit of a cold still. Yes, I know. I just got over one. It's bullshit. But that's how it is sometimes. Anyway, here we are. Hey, I know this place. Let's hear your story. Alright. Mobile research facility. I really would have liked to see this place in its prime. If there was one flashback, I would love to see Battleship Island when it's not run down. But, uh, yeah. It is a little bit mysterious, but it's a great, um, late game. Let's call it even a secret dungeon, because it, uh, it has some really good, really good stuff in it. Um, including, like I just mentioned, a hidden GF, a hidden boss, and, uh, some late game enemies that we can get our, um, our ultimate weapon supplies from but let's tackle the first first things first you know um, you don't want to walk when that's illuminating because you will get into a random battle all the time even if you have random battles turned off that is actually a recurring theme in this dungeon um, no encounter kind of doesn't work or it might half acidly work. I'm not quite sure yet. But I'll describe that further when we get to that part of the, the area. For now, it's just let's cut through everything with Squall as best we can. And there is some really cheap. Uh, death abilities up here. See right there, dragon skin. That was something we needed for Zell's weapon. I believe. So that's nice to have. <laughs> uh, and like we've been doing throughout the whole game, let's make sure our GFs are learning good things. I do like when you get to the point that the early game ones know everything, so you don't even have to fuck with them anymore. 
Because honestly, what you, what I try to do is, um, I try to assign like two, at least two to each character, and then we can be like, you perceive the resonance. And then I can be like, okay, junctions to this, and then boost whatever stats you know are applicable for each character. But these fights aren't exactly super difficult, so it's fine to. Sometimes the pattern's a little tricky there too, like it'll hold for longer than you think, or. But slowly but surely, you'll make your way there. And then, uh, discretion is the better part of valor, as the saying goes, so don't be afraid to stop short if you need to. It is not our will to fight. And here's where some of the cheap battles can occur. Because they don't fuck around. They give you 99 Ruby Dragon, level 99 Ruby Dragons to fight. Now, I have quest this with the uh, ability to act first during battle, and her health is so low, you're practically guaranteed to be able to hit the generator every single time. But, uh, even that being said, it's, there's still, if, like, enemy has first action priority, which I think comes up next, can kind of fuck with you. Now, there is a way to, to fuck, fuck right back with them. Never. And these are all the correct choices too, by the way. But, um... You can absorb... Here, back attacked. Fortunately, I got it off in time. But, uh... There is... I forget what you set to your, uh... To your, like, elemental junctions. It's either, uh fire or maybe even flare but you will absorb that dragon's attack I believe oh energy crystals those are neat HP plus 80 it's a fucking hell of a junction here's the hidden third option it's our nature we were born to fight damn it well we were born only to fight oh, close enough Shit. That's why I like this game so much. I identify with it. I'm sure I'm happy to have this day off. I worked, uh, working some pretty hardcore hours here at work, so forgive me if I, uh, if, if I sound worn out sometimes. The legendary GF Bahamut. I really like his design in this game, too. I mean, I think Tan has my favorite design of his, but this one's pretty wicked, too. Alright, so he's been meltdown, and now we hit him with this. Cut. Come on, Trigger. That's what you get for playing with a, a USB stick, though, too. Like, not always the most responsive, you know. But whatever. <laughs> we'll get there. Just keep squall attacking as much as possible with his uh, overdrive or trick, whatever. Fuck. I, I see. I was playing ten recently, so they're, I'm now calling them overdrives again. Good hits. Would have been nice to hit him with the big line heart, but you know. I think that only triggers one time in this playthrough and it does it to the secret uh, spoiler warning but it does it to the secret boss here in this area so that's pretty fucking cool I think actually well we got him let's see that's that meltdown and just pure physical damage you know that's all you gotta worry about hyper wrist that's a good item to give to one of your GFs and some good experience, too. Confirm. Another path to your destiny awaits. You are indeed an interesting one, brimming with passion. 
Now, let's check some stuff out. I can make... See, see I told you dragon skin. Uh, he has the best. Uh, where are we at? She has hers. Huh. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You have to go exit and then come back. And you can climb down. But, um... We are going deeper, obviously, into the deep sea research facility. And, um... Now, these rooms, your encounter non-ability is active. So, keep that on if you just don't want to fight a bunch of... You know, pointless battles. And as far as I'm concerned right now with Quistus, keep her HP as low as possible and give her initiative. And, you know, that's all we need to do. Um, what else is there? Oh, as far as the GF goes, Bahamut has some interesting abilities. It, um, he has the four the four, like, junction ability thing, so you can put up to four bonuses on the character at the same time. So I always put him to Squall to have, like, strength up. You know, um, basically every advantage you can with him. And there are some later games, too, where you can just boost speed and attack as much as possible. But uh, that 4x ability junction is pretty good. And you can get another item in the game in, uh, in Esther where you can do that. But I don't think I get it in this playthrough. Honestly, having it on one character is enough because Squall is pretty much game-breaking right now at this point in the game. On his strength alone. And I'm kind of taking it easy, too. Like, I could just have his speed boosted to obscene levels and uh, hook him up with, I don't know, someone else has initiative and they just cast aura at the beginning of every battle on him. So you could, And then ha give him initiative, too. So you can basically have a quick-hitting... Um, high damaging psychopath of a character <laughs> but here as we descend there's various steam charges what you need to use to open the doors if you do it correctly which I'm just write down the numbers if you're doing your own playthrough because I do it correctly uh, you will have enough at the end to open everything you need to try to keep 10 so tally it up in your head as you're going and decrease as you keep going down so, you'll get to the point where you can open the final machine without any issue, really. I don't think we'll be seeing that this episode because we're getting closer to the end of it, but uh, it will be continued next time. And I am thankful the encounter non works in this area because it would just be a bunch of, you know, long drawn out battles. But fortunately, we're good. Never mind, we do see it here. No, and you want to have Zell attack it because uh, then you can save the charges for later to fight the big optional boss at the end of this area which is a good old time <laughs> hey there's steam coming out everywhere all right all right just let me think um uh um zell do you, do you do you know what you're doing don't just don't just punch it man oh it's opening door to the ocean deposit Huh. Well, there you go. I guess, uh... I guess in the next episode we'll go to the ocean deposit and... 
Well, I already gave it away. We'll fight the secret boss and all that other fun stuff. So, until then, this is Rose Gamer. I'll see you later, and take it easy.